Welcome to Keeping It Real Podcast. Me, I'm Sweet Tea, and I talk with people weekly, monthly about technology, what supports you, what holds you back. We talk with it all. We, where we dive deep into the intersection of technology and the human experience. In today's episode, I have the pleasure of speaking with Christopher Williams, who is... <clears throat> a long time Toastmaster coming in today. That's why we're producing this episode for a Toastmasters workshop. Uh, our discussion today will center around the topic of what supports and does not support us in technology, as we live in a world where technology is increasingly intertwined with our daily lives. It's important to understand how it affects us and what we can do to navigate it better together we'll explore chris's personal experiences and insights as well as practical tips and strategies that can help us make the most of our relationship with technology so sit back relax and let's dive into the fascinating world of technology and the human psyche Start out real quick. I, I want to just jump into uh, dive into a definition of the word technology. Technology refers to the tools, techniques, and systems that are used to create, develop, and improve products and services. It encompasses everything from physical devices and software to processes and methodolo- methodolo- methodologies. Technology is an ever changing field and is constantly changing and advancing. And it's become an integral part of our daily lives. Its impact can be seen in every aspect of our society, from communication and entertainment to business and healthcare. But before I go on and get into our conversation with Chris about technology, I want to give a shout out to some uh, uh, an organization that's been helping me over the last decade toastmasters toastmasters international is a non-profit organization that helps individuals improve their public speaking communication and leadership skills with over 16,000 clubs in 143 countries toastmasters is the perfect place to develop your skills and become a more effective communicator and leader Join a Toastmasters club today and start your journey to success. And with that, I'd love to introduce to the show technology fellow technology enthusiast, Toastmaster member, Christopher Williams. Welcome to the show, Chris. Thank you. To start out, what, what, first of all, a few questions, what get to know for the fans experience what got you so much into technology well it's basically out of necessity i had one of the first uh laptops that came out from the sinclair company small thing and i had to back away from it because it was programmed in COBOL. (laughs) (laughs) that was way above my pay grade anyhow i've tried to keep my hand into uh, technology. I introduced computers or PCs, would use the old floppies in uh, an office where I was a judge, and it really worked very well. We could just staple uh, the floppies, well, not staple, but at least attach the floppies to the files. That way you could have stuff written on the floppies and it saved the clerk so much time and effort trying to get things together. So I've tried to stay pace with it as it came through the door. However, the door has gotten pretty crowded. And in fact, I'll be 81 this coming May. And I will tell you right now, there is a flood of technology out there. The best way I know of to deal with technology <laughs> is like the federal government. Get your mind fixed on what you want, throw money at it, stay up late, and get her done. Get her done. I love it. 
And just get I have a few questions here to to advance our conversation and all, but I, I'm we're gonna get into the best piece of technology and the essentially the worst piece of technology. But start out, how has technology changed the way we communicate or you communicate with each other, and what impact has this had on relationships? Well, we have of course Zoom, which stands out in the forefront. We have various programs for podcasting and so on. Uh, it is just a wonderment of opportunities out there. Uh, I understand that Google has an array of podcasts they list that they can provide to you. And there's just so much technology out there. It's almost like trying to dip your toe in a very turbulent and full lake. Everything mm. is moving. The water is flowing everywhere. Yeah. So we grab bits and pieces. I got involved in hybrid uh, when COVID struck, trying to get things set up so that those who wanted to meet in person could interface with those who uh, were coming in virtually. And again, I use the old principle, throw money at it, work late, try to piece things together, use your own equipment, and lo and behold, uh, I was able to come up with a system for Alan Toastmaster, and it is still working flawlessly today. So we were able to circulate that bit of technology to others, and at its height, I think we had 27 hybrid clubs within District 50, which you know, I attribute uh, to Duane, uh, because he was such a, a, a fellow who would guide you to a solution and say, make it happen. So, mm. Dwayne Wattick. And in, you mentioned District 50, D50, Toastmasters, for those who may not know in the Dallas area, not DFW, but Dallas and parts of East Texas and Shreveport, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. that's when he mentions D50, that's where that's coming from. I want to just get out and ask this question right right away. You mentioned a little bit isolating. Do you think technology is making us more connected or isolated? I think it's making us more connected. But at the same time, in getting more connected, you get specialized. So you go to certain places over others. So you're isolating in a sense too. You're not right. swimming in the in the full stream. You're just swimming on maybe the side or maybe the middle or maybe the other side. The old adage, don't too much of anything is never good, right? Too much of ice cream is never good. Too much technology, but a little bit can support your life in big ways, big drastic ways. Indeed. Like when I you got start into, being sorry, dependent on it is when it get, becomes a problem and yeah. issue. Indeed. That system that I set up at the office became one that was very popular with the clerks, very popular with the other judges in the office. And we were able to get decisions out to the public mm. fast. However, yeah. there were some people a little further up the, the ladder than I am, a, little, a pay grade or two, and they were not too happy with that. Hmm. Ready for this? About a year later, uh, they adopted the system. I wonder why. <clears throat> uh, one more question before I get into the meat of our conversation. What ethical concerns you mentioned started to, and this is great segue into this, what ethical concerns do you have about the way technology is currently being used, and how do you think these can be addressed? So many permissions are asked. Can we send you notifications? Lord knows, they just rain down from the heavens on you. Allow this camera, allow this, allow this everywhere. You have to allow permissions everywhere you go. Yeah. <laughs> and and that just overswamps my, my email boxes and so on. So oh, yeah. uh, that and there are privacy concerns. Where is this information going? Are you being targeted Indeed. by a particular advertiser that will swap you over time? Mm. We've had those, you know, they'll latch on to you 
every week there's something in your inbox. After a while, you know, you just label them spam and away they go. We hope. All right. So now let's get into it. Why we're all, why we came, came here to this episode. What, uh, that's, what is the best piece of technology that you have used in your life that supports you the best? I guess the traditional PC. I mean, I remember the Radio Shack model <laughs> at a very nice price, I might add. I got into them as soon as I could. I tried to expand my appreciation of the various ins and outs. I use a little bit of high tech now, like my headset. But otherwise, I feel like I've kind of been there and done that. And to get further involved, well, it's, you know, it's time consuming. You have to maintain equipment. You have to keep up with the various technologies that your equipment can access. So it's almost like, you know, being uh, flown into a forest and they give you a, a machete and they say, go for it. We'll look to see you on the other side of the mountain. Well, you know, there are some of us who do that. And there are some like you, who I consider preeminent in your field, who basically deal with technology so frequently that you become conversant in many different fields of technology. Sound, picture, wavelength, the whole bit. Yeah, it becomes a, like a, almost a way of life, almost. Mm -hmm. But you, you can easily just find yourself just getting immersed in it and find yourself depending on it, like going back to depending on it maybe too much. Ah, yes. But knowing when to step back. I, I do, I haven't done one in a while, but like a detox where I just do a detox day and I leave my phone home and I just go out and it's rewarding itself when you can just step away, leave your phone behind. <laughs> and Not going to happen. <laughs> so one, the, the second question of the, the piece, what is the technology, and you mentioned it before we started recording, I, uh, maybe it's that, but what is the technology that you wish either never existed or care never to see or use again? Well, I will say I'm very enamored with the, the PCs and all of the iterations of PCs. I mean, we have the PC um, connections to various pieces of equipment. And I just don't want to become overly dependent. I mean, when you have the option of dictating a letter, an email or whatever, versus tapping it out on the keyboard, what's going to be your choice? And then what will you do if you're unable to dictate and you have to go back to those little keys? I marvel at the people who can take their thumbs and operate all manner of equipment. How do they do it? I've got fingers that are just great big and fat and there's no way I can do great things with a keyboard. Uh, in any event, I would say the PC is, is probably the most major piece of technology I've ever gotten near. And I mean, I, I go all the way back <coughs> to the very beginnings of the, of the tech era. Certainly not back to ARPANET, which is the original set up for PCs and the internet in this country, but still, um, I've seen a lot of it and it is, how can I say, something that just draws you in and becomes so much a part of your life that you wonder how you could ever have done without it. But I've been in the era where we didn't have it. Mm -hmm. And hey, we were able to do things. Now, the big thing is information. Hmm. Coming to you, coming from you, and circulating all around. I, yeah, it and makes me nervous. I'm I'm kind of in that same boat. I consider one of the earliest millennials, where I've seen the both both worlds before and then after when when it's happened. And so I I can kind of see that because I lived I went to school without phones. Essentially, we had this simple flip phone. 
in the later part of my school career. <clears throat> so I can I can totally see tech non technology world and then after maybe about two thousand five, two thousand six. So I'm I'm that millennial that saw both. I go back to the crack out phones, yes indeed, and the party lines. Uh the push button phone was the big thing in, in my day. We were actually going through stuff in the house and lo and behold I found an old princess phone. It is a collector's item. Mm. What can I say? It still works. But even so. So moving one last question, then I get to some bonus questions and we'll wrap this up. And we can move you back into the Zoom after this. But one last question. Here. How do you think, we talked about the past. How do you think technology is going to change the world in the next 10 years? And what are you most excited or worried about? Well, the question is, where do we draw the line of technology? Body parts become damaged, mm -hmm. age, fall apart. It is strong possibility that they will be coming up for parts to replace human parts. Uh, additionally, there is the possibility, and it's almost in the realm of science fiction, to sort of download memories of a person and perhaps move them into a clone. Is this and in that already being done, like with the whole Facebook, I hear well, some things yeah, being done you know, kind we're, of. We're kind of working up on this stuff. And a, a clone loaded with your memories, what does that clone become? You? It's a, mm. it's a series of fine lines that are slowly being crossed. It's you, but it's not you. Mm -hmm. It's a copy. It's how you think. It's how you act, react, behaviors, but physical, maybe not. Mm -hmm. Maybe in sometime in the future, too. We, we've come a long way from the uh, supposed robots in, you know, clanking about in some of the uh, late 50s uh, movies and so on. And now they become exceptionally sophisticated. Yeah. Mm. I, they're drawing the lines now very closely. You can look at the, the scenes transpiring. You can see the technology being involved. I have seen several pictures of late that do involve uh, robots built to look like humans and having human uh, mindsets that can function hmm. in fact better than humans and that's where the wrinkle comes in and i'd like to continue more of this conversation but maybe for another day when we can have a little a good dive a little deeper into this good this has been great so far but one final question bonus question here i like to add at least one bonus question for my first podcast ex experience and inspiration lewis house the school of greatness as you saw before that's my first podcast i ever listened to and it's my inspiration inspiration for this podcast by the way i just gotta throw, throw that shout out in there what is your definition of innovation hmm Innovation is stepping forward from a particular mindset and going to a more advanced one. So, for example, instead of simple arithmetic, you go into algebra. From algebra, you go into higher mathematics. And then from there, you go into even more advanced and perhaps theoretical mathematics. Still mathematics, but you can see the gradations occurring over time. I mean, we get pi computed to an almost infinite number of uh, numbers. Uh, we have so many other things that can be done now with technology. It's almost limitless. And it's a little scary because of that. <clears throat> Again, to get a, the, it was great. That's Chris Williams on innovation. It was great conversation. I hope to have back on again to go dive deeper i'll let you go and exit the studio here and come back into the zoom so we can continue our workshop and thanks again this was fun okay thank you so much
Good talking to you.